In 1827, the Laird of Tillicoutry in Clackmannanshire was Robert Wardlaw Ramsay. It was a time in Scottish history when the resurrectionists were more than happy to dig up the newly buried dead to sell to local anatomists for dissection. News of Burke and Hare had spread to the countryside, but more locally James McNabb had hit the headlines in Stirling for digging up the grave of Mary Stevenson for a medical student five years earlier. Incidents like these led to watchtowers being erected over many graveyards, and a proposal was made for one to be built in the old kirkyard in Tillicoutry, which was then part of the Tillicoutry estate. The old church that once stood at the churchyard is long gone, although its 17th century bell is now in the parish church in the town, which itself is a replacement of the 1773 kirk. This original church had become too small as the town's population increased. Plus, much of this expansion was taking place on the lower slopes of the hills making it feel isolated from the parishioners. Tillicoutry House, however, was built nearby and the kirkyard formed part of its garden at the time of Robert Wardlaw Ramsay. A meeting was held and Ramsay gave his permission and offered financial assistance for the erection of a stone and lime building to be erected in a suitable corner of the cemetery where a watchman could keep an eye on the dead. Those who owned the graves were already in fear of their loved ones being exhumed, as in Dollar, the resurrectionists had already struck, causing fear and alarm in Tillicoutry. However, the idea didn't go down as well as expected. A local man, a few weeks earlier, had been fined by the Laird in his capacity of justice of the peace for poaching and he perhaps out of spite had drummed up support to reject the offer the people felt they had the right to construct a building of their own which would be transportable and placed over any new burial on the site requiring its protection they also believed the laird had no jurisdiction over the burial ground as they themselves owned certain graves. Unbeknown to Ramsay, at the time of the meeting, the locals had secretly built a wooden hut that came in manageable pieces, measuring five foot square that could easily and quickly be assembled. One morning, Ramsay had opened his bedroom curtains and saw this crude little structure fully operational in the churchyard, but in full view of his home. Standing on its four legs over a new burial, smoke was billowing out of its chimney as the watchman did his work. Ramsay was having none of it. The case ended up at the sheriff court, but not having a satisfactory outcome there, the case was referred to the Court of Session. In the end, the people's hut was not allowed to guard the graves. However, it's believed no bodies were ever targeted by the resurrectionists at the old cemetery. Tillicoutry House was abandoned in 1938 after it was de-roofed by Major Arthur Balcaras Wardlaw Ramsay a descendant of Robert Wardlaw Ramsay, and later demolished, with a housing estate built in its place. But the kirkyard was left alone. Within the burial ground is an early 12th century hogback grave marker, thought to be the earliest one in existence in the county. There are a number of surviving ornate graves at the site.
somewhere within the grounds are said to be the remains of the wicked Laird of Tillicoutry. The story goes that the local Laird failed to pay church dues to the abbot at Campus Kenneth Abbey, which amounted to quite a sum of money. The abbot decided to send a monk out to see him to recover the debt, but when he arrived, the Laird was in a bad mood. Nonetheless, the monk demanded the money. The conversation became heated and the Laird pushed the holy man, knocking him down to the ground. The punishment for hitting a man of God at the time was death. Realising what he'd done, he accepted his fate, if the monk told anyone. A few days later, the Laird suddenly died. In the days leading up to his death, he hadn't complained of feeling unwell. He was buried privately, but the next morning a clenched fist was seen above his grave. It was the hand that had struck the monk. The following morning, many of the townsfolk congregated at the Laird's graveside, where once again his fist protruded above the ground. The sexton quickly reburied it, but the next day the hand reappeared, and so began a ritual that lasted for a week. The townsfolk got word to Campus Kenneth, asking for help, but the abbot refused. News of the fist spread, and hundreds turned up, hoping to see the spectacle. Eventually, the sexton had an idea. In order to keep the hand in the grave, the only solution was to place something heavy on top of it. So with the help of onlookers, he placed a large stone over the burial site. In reality, it seems likely that the Laird wasn't actually dead when he was buried, but in a coma and tried to attract the attention of people to help him get out of the ground. The graveyard is open to the public and is well worth a look around. It is also part of the Kirkyard Trail, taking in the cemeteries at Muckert, Dollar, the lower Kirkyard by the parish church in the town, Alva and Logie's old Kirkyard, and the remains of its church at Blair Logie. The private burial ground of Tate's tomb to the former residents of the Harveston estate between Dollar and Tillicoutry is also part of the trail, but is only open to the public on occasions such as Doors Open Day. <laughs>